On the show today, we head to Liberty Football's newest gym, a state-of-the-art indoor practice facility. We'll also begin to get ready for the 2017 season on the gridiron and introduce you to a man who's made others stronger, both in the weight room and in their walk with Christ. It all starts right now. This is Game On. plus degrees outside but we are oh so cool inside the brand new Liberty football indoor facility the 29 million dollar building houses a full-size practice field and rivals some of the very best facilities in college football what's up everybody welcome to game on he's red I'm Matt just a couple of bearded dudes being guys <laughs> and uh Rhett, when you take a look at this building it is easy to see why Liberty Football is making the jump to FBS. Oh, it sure does. Top-notch facilities, top-notch people. On today's show, we're going to introduce you to a few of those and also take a look at some football players to keep an eye on this yeah, season. That is right. But first, we begin with the annual trek to Big South Media Day. Now, this year for the football squad, it had a little bit of a different feel, you see, because Liberty's in the first of a two-year transition to the Football Bowl subdivision. Now, they're not eligible for the FCS playoffs this year, not eligible for the Big South Championship or preseason poll, but despite not having those incentives out there, don't think this group isn't fired up about kicking off the season. The excitement around this team and the focus on the task at hand is as good as ever. We're going to go and play this season like we've played any other season. We're going to go out to play to win. Uh, we're going to do it really for God. Number two, we're going to do it for our fans. And then we're also just competitors as coaches and players. We don't want to lose. I mean, it's just like me and you go pick up a pickup game or something, or golf or whatever it is, I'm going to try to beat you. So it's no different here as we're playing in this 2017 season. I think this, this team has the potential to be the best team in years that Liberty's had. Going through last year and seeing what the team has developed into, and then this year, just keep getting better and better and growing closer together. Although the Flames are not eligible for the FCS playoffs, the individual players are eligible for awards. Eight players in total were selected to the Big South Football Preseason All-Conference team. Here's a list of preseason All-Conference Flames. Running back Carrington Mosley, offensive lineman Dante Duff, defensive lineman Juwan Wells, defensive back Chris Turner, kicker Alex Probert, hunter Trey Turner, long snapper Hunter Winstead, and in kick return, Frankie Hickson. One last thing to take note of is that the Flames swept the preseason all-conference honors when it comes to special teams, quite the feat for the special teams group that struggled just a few years ago. Big improvement there. Well, all of this is building up to the season opener on September 2nd when the Flames travel to Waco, Texas to face the Baylor Bears. The kickoff time has been set for 7 o'clock Eastern. It will be the first meeting ever between the two programs, and the game can be seen on FS2 of the Fox Sports Network, an eye-catching game against a Big 12 opponent, and oh baby, it's only five weeks away. Well, the man you're about to meet reminds me a lot of Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Well, Dave Williams has been doing just that for the past several decades at Liberty University, and the impact he's made on athletes is truly remarkable. When I was just a little kid, I got excited about strength and muscles. And I just, my, my earliest memory was of my grandmother reading the Bible to me and read about Samson. And I thought, man, I would love to be like that. All that strength and all that ability. And that was just my earliest memory of somebody with muscles doing something big. And I wanted to be like that. It was a childhood dream that would prove to be a lifelong calling. For Dave Williams, the pursuit of strength led him to the football field. He was an All-American and NAIA national champion in college and then continued to pursue his passion for strength training during his subsequent military service. A few years later, Williams' passion would lead him to take a big step of faith, leaving a high school teaching job in Virginia and moving his family to Alabama for a grad assistant position on the Crimson Tide's strength staff. That time under legendary head coach Bear Bryant would pay off as the following year Williams was named the head strength coach at Texas A&M. By faith, God took care of us step by step. That was a big learning experience for me. Texas A&M only had one strength coach and he had only been there two years. So whatever I did had to work. Despite early success with the Aggies, Coach Williams had a longing to work in Christian education. While visiting friends back in Virginia, he toured a relatively new college that shared his passion, Liberty Baptist. 
After talking with the school's athletic director, it didn't take long for Williams to know Liberty is where he wanted to be. I gave him my whole story. He said, Dave, you really want to be here, don't you? And I said, yeah, I really do. He said, well, you know what? We're not going to get anxious about it, are we? I said, no, we're just going to pray and wait on it. And uh, he said, uh, well, we're going to pray for you. And uh, when, when God's ready for you to come, he's going to open the door and let you come. That was like four months later. We came here, my wife and I both, in agreement that this is like a home mission field for us. Bill Gillespie was Coach Williams' first assistant at Liberty, and they shared a common goal. He shows so much appreciation and his enthusiasm for what he does, and you want, it's contagious. So you want to be a part of it. We knew we were both here for the same reason. It wasn't like we're here to make money, we're here to get ahead, we're here to do this or that. We're here because God wants us to be here. We want to serve the Lord here and reach the athletes for Christ. And for Gillespie, Coach Williams' impact wouldn't stop in the weight room. He took me under his wing. He taught me how to be a strength coach. But he also taught me how to be a husband. He taught me how to be a father. I came to Liberty to study the youth ministry because I wanted to reach young people for Christ. I never thought it would ever be through strength and condition. But if it wasn't for Coach Williams, teaching me how to be a man of God, a husband for God, a father for God, and a strength coach for God. I, I, I would never have been in that role, and I never would have had that small role of playing in helping reach the world for Christ here at Liberty University. And reaching student athletes for Christ was Coach Williams' top priority. That's extremely humbling to know that God's using you, or has used you at times, to change people's lives. And then Barry Rice is the biggest one, I can tell you. I've never seen a more changed life, ever. A tough offensive lineman from rural Virginia, Barry Rice struggled balancing the fierceness of the sport with his Christian walk. I wanted to be the best player that I possibly could be because I had a goal. I wanted to run everybody over. But Coach Williams taught me this one thing, that you want to be the best football player that you could be because it's a testimony for Jesus. And I said, yeah, 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 that's right. We want to do that, but, but I wanted to be the strongest guy on the football team. I wanted to be respected. I wanted to be the man. For the first time in my life, when I would spend time with Coach Williams in the weight room, I would see a strong man, a man that was tough as nails, but a man that undeniably loved Jesus Christ more than anything else on this earth. And that challenged me. I, I mean, that really challenged me. There was this, this collision of my selfishness of wanting to run over everybody that got in my way so that I could accomplish my goal and the selflessness of Dave Williams and his love for Jesus Christ and wanting to honor Jesus in everything he did. Every morning, 7.30 a.m., I had an appointment. Coach Williams said, I want you to be here, and this is just like a weight room workout, and what we're going to do is we're going to open the Bible. We're going to look at this word, and we're going to learn it. And he said, you know, Psalm 119, we read that verse in 11, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And man, this guy challenged me to memorize the word of God, taught me principles of how to live, and what a true man was, not Dave Williams, but Jesus Christ. See, that's, that's what a true man was and is. It's Jesus. And uh, Dave Williams was the embodiment of teaching me about that and to hide God's word in my heart. Changed lives, the legacy of a coach focused on the eternal. Hey man, how you doing? Brother? Yeah, we're not. This has been my home for 33 years. I can't leave. The annual spring game felt a little different for Coach Williams this year. He recently retired after more than three decades and was being honored for his faithful service. The hugs and thank yous from current and former student athletes flowed freely. It's bittersweet, but even though his time leading the weight room has come to an end, the legacy Coach Williams leaves behind is best measured by the lives forever changed. One on one, one on team, there was a huge impact. But he made disciples. And from them disciples, 
you can go all across America and find the Dave Williams influence in being coached all across America. So how many people were touched? In 33 years, just the athletes, the coaches, the teachers, the people that he, when he was around, tons. How many disciples did he make? Lots. And he's made a huge difference in many, many, many people's lives. He made me a better person. He made me a better Christian. And he made me a better player. And uh, I just pray and hope that I could have the impact on someone like he's had on me. One thing I think is just incredible about the story is that the impact he makes on other individuals, yeah. they have an impact as well. And just how far his love of Christ has spread over athletes across the world is truly just incredible. Impressive to me, and it's so much what this show is about, is the fact that sports, athletics, are not just about what happens on the field. Sure. That's part of it, but you can impact so many people through the vehicle of sports, through the vehicle of athletics, and in many cases, you impact people, like we saw in that story with Barry Rice, that never would have been impacted through other means. Sports can be used as a means to share the gospel. Although he's retired, I still think he's gonna be doing work somewhere. Uh, yeah, no doubt about that. Well, listen, turning from football now to basketball, last season, the Liberty men won 21 games, and with all the talent they bring back this season, their ceiling, as Michael Jordan might say, is the roof. I still don't quite know what that means. But with all the excitement around the squad, the Flames have released their non-conference schedule for this season, and it all starts on November 10th with a home game against Clark Summit. Some other notable games include at Wake Forest on November 14th, before then traveling to the Paradise Jam in the Virgin Islands for a pre-Thanksgiving tournament. Not a bad deal there. Another good-looking matchup comes December 2nd against UNC Greensboro. And then there's the showdown with the Mastodons of Fort Wayne on December 21st. All that leads up to what should be another competitive Big South campaign. Well, coming up, we tell you how one man's vision of seeing Liberty football play at the highest level has come to life. Plus, Bobby introduces us to a Flames football player and the return of Warm Hot and Fuego. That's when Game On comes back. Are you ready? You have learned not just how to make a living, but also how to live. You have learned from the teachings of Jesus to live your lives by the great commandment, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbors as yourselves. Liberty's mission is to train young people to succeed in every profession and to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. The more people tell you it's not possible, that it can't be done, the more you should be absolutely determined to prove them wrong. Treat the word impossible as nothing more than motivation. As long as you have pride in your beliefs, courage in your convictions, and faith in your God, then you will not fail. I used to watch the medical shows on TV when I was younger and I wanted to be like the doctors and the nurses. But I think nursing was a really good fit for me because of the holistic approach that they take. There was a point in my nursing career that I was ready to go back. I actually remember two patients in particular telling me that they could see me doing more. The FNP DNP program is obtaining a family nurse practitioner degree. The DNP is the doctor of nursing practice. My husband and I love to go on mission trips. 
and we've been on a few medical mission trips. And I believe that the FMP DNP degree will really open up the door on the mission field a lot more. I think there was a few things that stood out on this campus. Number one, how kind people were to each other and how much the faculty truly cared for us as students, wanting us to succeed in pursuing higher education. Hey there, welcome back to this beautiful indoor football practice facility. You know, I can remember it like yesterday, that February day when the Flames announced they were going to the FBS level. It was a dream come true for the current members of Liberty Football, but it was also a dream come true for our late founder, Jerry Falwell. When Liberty University came into existence in 1971, it was the vision of Jerry Falwell Sr. coming to life. His vision was a bold one, especially when it came to athletics. It's our plan to have our athletic program comparable to USC, to Notre Dame, to Alabama, to anybody in time. This past February, that bold vision became a reality as Liberty University was granted a waiver by the NCAA to join the football bowl subdivision, the highest level of collegiate football. What a tremendous blessing today is, and uh, we're just uh, truly, truly grateful to, uh, to have the opportunity to uh, reclassify from FCS to FBS. It's uh, very gratifying that uh, we're able to fulfill Dr. Falwell's original vision, which is to play at the very highest level, and uh, we're going to work extremely hard to make sure that this is uh, a successful transition and one that, uh, again, glorifies God in all that we do. This is a combination of 45 years of effort and of uh, prayer and of hard work and we, we just could not be more thrilled. It's a historic day for Liberty. Well, I got a big smile on my face. Uh, it's, it's a dream come true, and to God be the glory. Uh, we do have to honor him and everything we do and everything we say. It's a blessing uh, for me to be a part of this, and I know that the, the late Dr. Jerry Falwell, his spirit is right here. With this announcement, the Flames football program immediately begins a two-year transition period before becoming an independent FBS member. This coming season, 2017, we'll continue to play FCS football. In 2018, we'll move to be a transitional FBS member. And then in 2019, we'll be a full-fledged member of FBS and uh, be eligible to, uh, to play in bowl games. So very exciting for, uh, for our football program and very exciting for our entire athletic department. Of course, the entire university will benefit from this. And football recruiting will certainly benefit as well. The facilities were already in place, but now the ability to play at the highest level will be an incredible benefit on the recruiting trail. As we have uh, really talked to many, many people in, in the last five years I've been here, uh, have talked to some people who have been gone to uh, FBS schools, uh, why you didn't choose uh, Liberty University. Uh, you know, they're, they're Christians and all that. And they say, because you're not, you don't play at the top level. And so now they can, we can squash that. Uh, now we, we're gonna play at the top level. And so we'll be able to get into homes and we'll be able to get our share of top rated uh, players across the country. And then there are those players who are already on campus. And for those that will now have the chance to play at college football's premier level, it's a welcome surprise. It's a dream come true for every single one of us that uh, put a helmet on, that are a part of Liberty University, coaches included. Just a great opportunity for us. Knowing for the longest time that Liberty University had everything that we needed, we just needed, I don't know, we just needed the grace of God to get there. And we finally are here, and it's a dream come true. A dream come true and the completion of a vision more than 40 years in the making. Well, it was the band player who sang the iconic song, Baby Come Back. Now, I haven't been saying those lyrics to Rhett. I have been saying them about Warm, Hot, and Fuego, though, and Baby, it's back. Special Warm, Hot, and Fuego. That's we're right. here in the indoor facility, so we're going to look at three players to watch on the yeah. Liberty football team this year on the offensive Correct. side of the ball. We'll get to the defense later. Don't worry about it. All right, Warm, offensive player. Who's Warm? Antonio Gandy Golden. This guy yeah. last year, he was like the missing link. You know, you had your receivers, you had Farrow, yeah. you had King as well, but then Gandy Golden, this freshman, comes out of nowhere and you're like, who is this guy? And he just starts putting in work. He had that 
just that chemistry. It was like yeah. a sixth sense for him and Buckshot. Yep. They just seemed to know exactly where each other were at on the field. And I remember I was down on the sidelines for a game, kind of in the second quarter, I believe, and Golden gets a pass and he turns around, jukes this guy out of his shoes, and then he's off to the races. So for a big man, he's got a ton of speed, a ton of mobility, and I think with an off season more of just getting a little bit stronger, a little quicker, and perhaps even learning the system a bit better, I, the sky's the limit for this guy. No doubt about it, yeah. like those big bodied receivers. All right, right, from warm now to hot, who's your choice? Hot, this guy, he almost for me was in fuego. It's really Whoa, close. Hey. Frankie Hickson, yeah. you know, I think we should start calling this guy Mighty Mouse. You remember really? that old oh, cartoon? That oh, cartoon. Mighty Mouse yeah. is great because he's only five foot eight, but man, Kennesaw State, when he had yeah. that 99 yard run, he was bouncing off of bodies, finding gaps. He's got so much speed, so much just raw ability. You know, I love the off season in the sense that you don't know what you're gonna get when they step onto the field. Yeah. You don't know how much they're going to improve. And this is another guy, you know, coming in a young guy, he's gonna improve and he's gonna be so much better and he's just gonna, he has the potential to make the rest of the league look silly this year. So, and running back position and in the kick return game. Yes, dangerous sure. weapon. All right, yeah. finally, it all leads up to this in Fuego. You're in Fuego choice for an offensive player to watch for Liberty in 2017. People are probably gonna look at me and say, no, duh, Rhett, but Buckshot Calvert, yeah. this guy, you know, last season, we talk about his footwork, we talk about just the arm. Yeah, you know, no we, we had Legatron a couple years ago, we can call this guy Armatron <laughs> if you thing? want to. Yeah, why not? Is that not? a real thing? I, I don't know. Yeah, I will, we'll make it one. But this guy is just, once again, raw potential in these young athletes, and he can find guys downfield, perhaps if he, you know, hones down the accuracy a little bit. Yeah. Not that he was bad last year, but, you know, there's always areas to improve in. He's just going to be unstoppable here for the Flames in the years to come. Yeah, can't wait to see how much he grows. This offense could be explosive totally. in 2017. Can't wait to see what they're able to do uh, throughout the season. Right. All right, we're talking about Liberty athletes, Liberty football players yep. in specific. We're inside. Nice yeah. AC. Being the gentleman Beautiful. that we are, we sent Bobby out in the heat. <laughs> she has more on a Liberty athlete that we expect big things from in 2017. Thanks, guys. Well, you know it's going to be a good day when you finally get to start talking about football again. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I wanted to give the players a chance to talk everything but football. So this week, we decided to put Sullivan McGinty on the hot seat to see how well he could answer on Flames Fill in the Blank. Flames Fill in the Blank, you know how this works. I'm going to ask the questions. You give me your wholehearted answers. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to set up a scenario for you. You were on a deserted island, and you get to pick one of your Liberty teammates to be with you on that island. Who are you pick it? Dante Duff. Why? Because he's from Texas like me, and you know, he's a country guy, I'm a country guy, so we can put our minds together to survive. All right, so do you like country music? Yes, I do. Okay, so who's your favorite singer? Uh, Jason Aldean, besides George Strait, of course. So you really like country? You like yes. the, the older country? Yes, I do. So before a football game, are you listening to George Strait or? George Strait and Jason. Okay, Liberty. before a game, that's what yeah. you're listening to? Yes, ma'am. Wow, that gets you hyped. Yeah. You had the choice to pick your college roommate, and it was between Tim Tebow, Tom Brady, or Odell Beckham. Who would you pick? I want to say Tim Tebow, but I'm going to go with Tom Brady. Who, who's going to get top bunk and who gets bottom? I have to get bottom. Okay, why? Because I'm more heavier. You know, I'm pretty sure I weigh more than him. Yeah, you want to make sure everyone's safe, want, yeah, make sure everything's leveled out. Top, and then if anything happens, I'll be the first to protect him. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you're a good so, teammate. Yeah, I'll that's, be there for him. Okay, what is the most money you've ever spent at a fast food place in a single sitting? I say McDonald's. Okay. They had, back home, they had this deal where you can get like three hot and spices, two large fries, 20 piece McNuggets, and probably something else. And you finish it all? Yeah. Okay. We'll share it with my brothers or something. I don't okay. want to. 15 Hurt bucks. myself, but All right. 15 bucks. All right. Which coach on the Liberty football team still's got game? Coach Roberts. Okay, everyone you know, says him. This guy can run a mountain without stopping. Really? Yes. Okay. And he'll run this whole campus. And if you try to run with him, you're stopping on the first lap. If you could get dinner with anyone in the world, dead or alive, who would you choose? Carrie Underwood. Carrie Underwood. Why? Fell in love with at an early age, you know. <laughs> It, you know, ages separated us, but. And you, know. you and you love country. I love country. Okay, we're gonna talk about your teammates. Mm -hmm. Who is the best Madden player on this team? Just because he beat me more than I beat him, I have to go with Lucas Iron. Okay. Yeah. But um, we will have our rematch. So yeah. he's beating you right now. Yeah, he's All right, me right I'll now. be praying for you. <laughs> and who is the nicest guy on the team? I want to say David King. David, why? What 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 separates him? He's smooth. 
Okay. You know. Oh, he has the right words to say. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's so innocent. He's so innocent and like, you want to say he's like a guilty, guilty person. We call him White Chocolate. Stuff, okay, so. so David King, White White Chocolate, <laughs> and most dramatic on the team. You gotta say Chris Turner. Chris and, Turner, yeah. yeah. Any little small thing, he's just gonna, you know, Chris he's Turner. gonna blow it up. He's gonna I, blow it out of proportion. Okay, I learned a lot that I didn't know about you. Thank you for joining us on Flamesville, the Blake Sullivan. You're welcome. Thanks again to Solomon McGinty for taking time to sit with us on Flames Fill in the Blank. But let me tell you guys, if you thought that one was good, we've got lots more coming your way in the next couple weeks. Matt Rett, back to you. Thank you, Bobby. Still to come, our old friend William Byron represents Liberty all the way to another checkered flag. That's when Game On comes back. Don't go anywhere. You might have heard some things about Liberty University, like how we're just a little Christian school in the middle of nowhere. And there's nothing to do here. I mean, come on, you know us, boring. Boring? Yeah, they say we don't work as hard, think as hard, try as hard. I object. The truth is, well, we might surprise you. University, the world's largest Christian university. Want to come visit us? Well, you're in luck. Homecoming is a perfect opportunity for alumni, families, and newcomers to participate in the game day experience. At College for a Weekend, you get to hear from speakers, go to classes, and attend our weekend concert. Ring in the new year with us at Winterfest. Spend the day snowboarding at Snowflex, rock climbing, or at the artist Q&A, then rock out at night with the top Christian artists. With so many ways to visit our campus, why aren't you here already? Hey there, welcome back to Game On. We're so glad you've stayed with us. Matt, you and I, big baseball fans. Oh, yeah. And when you get that prospect down in the minor leagues and they're being successful and they're moving up and they're still successful yeah. at higher levels, you know that they're going to be something. Yeah, and that's certainly the case with William Byron on the NASCAR circuit. Byron, of course, a Liberty student as well as being a racing phenom, took his third checkered flag this past weekend at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It was also his first win driving the old number nine Liberty car. That's right, the 19 year old continues to impress in his first season on the Xfinity Series. After the win at Indianapolis, he is in second place in the standings, just 40 points behind the leader, Elliot Sadler, also the youngest person to ever win now at Indianapolis. Definitely a bright future ahead for him. Yeah, no doubt about that. Well, listen, we're about out of time for today. We want to thank the Liberty Football Program for letting us come here into their beautiful indoor practice facility. What a gym this is, oh, and how much is this going to help as Liberty continues their transition towards FBS, a full-fledged FBS member in 2019. Yeah, well, if you like the stories we showed you today, make sure you check out our website, GameOnLU.com, and also us on social media at GameOnLU. He's Rhett. I'm Matt. Thanks so much for watching. We'll plan on seeing you right back here at Game On next time. Still controlling, it scores! 